bit. Um, Mom was one of the most positive people I've ever known. It was really natural to her. Um, she greeted people with a warm smile. She looked for the good at people. She'd been called a Pollyanna, but she didn't mind. She loved raising her children. Uh, she was a wonderful mother to me. She gave me confidence in ways um, I, in just many, many ways. Um, when I was about eight, I was taking piano lessons, and I told mom, my piano piece for Christmas was Oh Holy Night, and it was three pages long, and I only knew two. And so she said, just go up there and play of what you know. <laughs> so that's what I did. I went up there, and I played the first two pages, and when it got to the big crescendo of fall on your knees, I got up and sat down. <laughs> and everybody looked around and started clapping. <laughs> but those, I can say many things uh, like that, that kind of confidence. Just do what you can. Just, just, you can do it. And so, um, that just was the way she was. There's so many uh, examples of that. Mom loved the Lord, and she tried her best to live a godly life. Don't get me wrong, she definitely could be very spicy at times. <laughs> um, when I think of Mom, I think of so many things, but mostly a well-lived life, and she was so loved. I'm going to stay seated. Um, I was thinking about the different times in my life where I felt closest to mom. And it seemed like my grade school life, I remember the most um, from when I was little till about second grade. And it was real different in those days because uh, from kindergarten till second grade, we actually had like hour lunches where I would walk home from school and we mom made a beautiful lunch. We had the teacher come home for school and had lunch at the house and mom laid out beautiful lunch for the teachers. And also I remember um, mom was in junior women's club and they would put on these different shows and Heather and I were actually watching some uh, videos, our DVD last night that Chris put together about um, the Foreman family. And I watched Mom doing a can can <laughs> on the stage from her junior women's club and watched the 4th of July parade where Sue was a baby and she was bouncing her around. And Chris and Frank and I were Hawaii and Uncle Sam and Alaska going down the road. <laughs> And um, I remember those, and maybe it's from the, the seeing the videos, but I, I still remember those. And then another great time that I remind, remind me um, of having a great time with mom was in Eugene when uh, Steph and Heather and Nathan Ben were in preschool. And we got to spend a lot of time together with the four kids, and that was a real special time. And then this last year and a half. Um, basically, Tom and I scheduled all our lives around what mom needed and, uh, you know, taking her to various appointments and get her hair done, get her nails done, go to the doctor, go to the chiropractor, everything around what, what she needed done. And everywhere we went, everybody got a kick out of her. You know, she, she always was funny. They thought she was pretty funny. And, you know, at first she kind of was, oh, don't tell me what to do. I can take care of myself, you know, and, and she was kind of fighting it. But probably the last six, seven months, she would tell people, well, just listen to her. I used to be the mother. Now she is. <laughs> but I taught her everything she knows. <laughs> so she's smart. Don't listen to her. But it's because of me. <laughs> so... I'm going to miss her. I don't know what to do with myself.
myself. <laughs> but I'm just so thankful that I had Tom to be the physical part of the situation. He drove us everywhere. Ooh. He helped her in and out of the car, sometimes physically helping both of us. <laughs> I don't know what I would have done without him. And the support from Frank and Rila, and um, also from Eileen and everybody else that stepped in, you know, when I couldn't do everything. So we miss her. made her home feel very comfortable, like your own home. And I'm going to try not to. Uh, we had to stay there a few times, which was wonderful. I, their house in Eugene is still the best house I can ever imagine them, I've ever been to. I loved it. And just so many memories of everything from the tree house my dad helped build the back circuses, all kinds of fun stuff, and there was so that basement with everything in it was amazing. Staying there and just going to visit. Um, but in that time, she taught me so many different things. She taught me. I started teaching me how to play the piano, which was fun. Um, singing. Uh, one thing that was really great is she taught me how to sew uh, the sewing machine, but not just how to sew, but how to completely take the machine apart and put it back together if you ever had any problems so I could take care of it. And I took that with me the rest of my life. It helped me be very creative and I've used my sewing skills for my own businesses. And I mean, it was just so much fun. But um, yeah, she just, I agree with Sue, just helped with the confidence. And if you want to do this, just do it and just practice, practice, practice. Um, which I, I do. <laughs> um, and um, I think by that time, Dennis kind of gave up on the boy, <laughs> and um, so I didn't have a bit of a tomboy because of it. He taught me to go to football, and Mom loved every bit of that because she said, basically, because she was a tomboy, so was I. Because <laughs> um, she always encouraged me, even like when you saw that video, to climb trees. She loved climbing trees. <laughs> Taught me how. I guess most of my childhood was spent upside down. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, mom was really good about always with all of us kids um, being fun. She was the fun mom. Mm -hmm. And um, everybody loved coming to our house because we had so much fun. And we were always laughing, smiling. And she was, she, you know, into the end. She was always the one that had the biggest smile ever that everybody loved. And it just doesn't seem possible that she's gone. Um, I'm Melissa, daughter of um, Nancy. Um, when I think of grandma, I think of just pure magic. She would come up to me with her hands cupping something. And I did not know what it was, but then she would just place her hands over mine and I would open mine and there'd be a frog. <laughs> <laughs> and she taught me such a love of bugs and amphibians and nature. And she, she was always just making magic for me as a child. And I still remember us taking the long jaunt in the field behind the Bauer house and going to pick raspberries and coming back. And we didn't have a big pie pan. She saved these small little pie pans so each child could individually make the pie that they wanted, do it the way that they wanted. She always encouraged us to, to be 
our individualistic self and to express ourselves that way. And it meant so much to me. I remember her giving me four leaf clovers, telling me stories about fairies and elves, and just, like I said, she, she was magic to me. And it helped. And I will pass that on, and I will pass on all of the magic that she taught me as a child, and the dreams and the imagination, and just the joy and magic of this world that she brought into my life. And I'll always say, oh, 